Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about breast cancer. This is an overview of how this video is going to go. So first off we're going to talk about just an overview of the anatomy of the breast. Then we're going to talk about epidemiology and the risk factors to develop breast cancer including the modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. We'll talk about screening. We're going to mention some positives and some negative negatives about screening. Then we're going to have a brief overview of a, a breast cancer and how um, people with breast cancer can present. Then we're going to talk about the types of breast cancer. And we decided to divide this into non-invasive carcinomas and invasive carcinomas. So non-invasive include DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ, lobular carcinoma in situ, and Paget's disease of the breast. Invasive, we're going to talk about invasive ductal carcinoma, invasive lobular carcinoma, medullary carcinoma, and inflammatory carcinoma of the breast. We're going to talk about how this is diagnosed, how breast cancer is diagnosed, any complications that can follow, and also the treatment for breast cancer, which can vary depending on the type, and we're going to talk about that. This video is going to be very much pathology focused, so we're going to focus a lot on this area here about the different types of breast cancer. So about the anatomy of the breast. So here in this image we can see um, a breast and it, there's lots of fatty tissue in the breast and also these structures here which are very important in lactation. So the lobules we can see here and these go into ducts and then these ducts uh, all converge in the nipple and it's where milk comes out from. This one is in the lobes is where milk is produced. Um, this is very important because some carcinomas can affect mostly these areas, the lobes, whereas others can affect mostly the ducts. And um, also important, and you can't really see them in this image, but there are um, important ligaments called suspensory ligaments of Cooper, which help attach, uh, which attach to the breast itself. Uh, and we're going to talk later about their importance, but they have they can be important in some signs of breast cancer like skin dimpling for example and here we can see the lymph drainage of the breast which is also very important because as we can see in this image a lot of the drainage itself can actually go to the axilla so sometimes breast cancer can present as a swelling in the armpit which is a swollen lymph node so it's always important to check these lymph nodes when you when you suspect breast cancer now let's talk about the epidemiology. So breast cancer is very, very prevalent. Um, it, there are around 55,900 new cases of breast cancer, of breast case, uh, sorry, of breast cancer in the UK every year. This data I got from the research, uh, Cancer Research UK. And they also said that breast cancer is the most common cancer in the UK. If you look at this graph that I also got from the Cancer Research UK, you can see how breast cancer is very prevalent and it's almost in its entirely in women. Uh, you can see here the blue is in men and the pink is in females. And these are usually postmenopausal females. So definitely a very, very important disease. And with a disease as important as breast cancer, it's important for us to keep in mind the risk factors, which are divided between risk factors we can't really change and respectable risk factors which are modifiable. So unmodifiable risk factors include, include early menarche, which is um, when, when the female starts having periods. So that's if that happens early, that could be a risk factor. Or late menopause, which is when females stop having periods. So yeah, late menopause can also be a risk factor. So if you look at these two, it just means that there's an increased exposure to several hormones, including estrogen, and that can increase your risk. Genetic mutations, to keep in mind, there's a BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutation, which are both, they, they both increase your risk of having breast cancer, among many other problems as well. But breast cancer is a very, it's a very important condition to remember if someone has any of these mutations. A family history of breast cancer, especially if it's a first relative. A personal history, so if someone had a uh, breast cancer in the past, they increased risk of having it again. Uh, we're going to talk about different types and how this can change per person. 
a history of previous radiotherapy, especially in the area. Uh, so if they had, for example, lung cancer or something of the sort, and they did radiotherapy, they increased risk. And their ethnicity as well can be a factor. Now, when it comes to modifiable risk factors, postmenopausal obesity is a big risk factor as well. Hormone therapy, so if they're taking hormones, especially related to estrogen. Uh, reproductive history, so if they haven't had any children, they're at increased risk. Alcohol consumption, if they drink a lot. Uh, if they if they didn't breastfeed during their when um when, if they had children and they didn't breastfeed or if they didn't have children and didn't breastfeed, that's also a risk factor. And if there's a late age of first pregnancy, it's also a risk factor. For men, these risk, there's these risk factors are a lot smaller. Um, there are a few more risk factors, but the main ones to keep in mind, just because of how rare breast cancer is in men, is BRCA2 mutations and Kleinefelter syndrome, which um, it's a genetic abnormality in men, which can predispose them to breast cancer. So again, this image shows um, some more risk factors from breast cancer. I got this from City of Hope. Um, and here goes to show if you have a full, a first full term pregnancy before the age of 25, your decreased risk of breast cancer, maintaining a healthy weight, exercising regularly, one or more full-term pregnancies, breastfeeding once you have children, and menopause before the age of 50. There are some more risk factors that we mentioned before. Uh, all of these decrease risk, by the way. All of these that I mentioned the, actually decrease your risk of having breast cancer in the future. But there, there are many other things that a person can do. Uh, some of them were mentioned in the previous slide. So yeah, uh, if you want, you can pause the video now and try to have a read of this uh, picture. I know it can be a little bit hard, but I'd say have a look and have those in mind. Now, when it comes to breast screening, breast screenings in the UK, th its main focus is to find precancerous lesions, also known as in-situ. In-situ means that it hasn't spread anywhere else, uh, or at least at the proper definition is that it didn't break through the basement membrane. And in this stage, they're usually a lot more treatable than when they become invasive, which then it can metastasize and can be very hard to treat. So the objective is to find lesions that are that can still be cured with relative a lot easier than if they become invasive. And in the UK, breast screening starts uh, is offered to all women between 50 and 70. After the age of 70, you can still um, sign up, but you're not going to be automatically invited. And some women under the age of 50 can also be invited if they are increased risk of developing breast cancer. Uh, and this is usually done as a mammography every three years. And if an abnormality is detected, then the patients are recalled for further assessment. This further assessment can usually be a biopsy. Breast, breast screening is a bit of a polemic topic um, because there are several pros and cons. In this slide, I'll just mention some of the pros and some of the cons. Again, um, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to say my position in the matter because it's not relevant. But some pros is that less deaths from breast cancer. Obviously, this is a very big pro. More conservative surgery. Uh, if you can detect a problem early, usually the surgery won't be as radical as if you find a problem late. Less need for chemotherapy. Always a positive side because chemotherapy has several bad side effects. Improved breast awareness so people can actually be watch out more for the symptoms or the signs of breast cancer. Reassurance people can be can feel safer about uh, their breasts and know that they well potentially don't have a cancerous lesion. Improved symptomatic breast care so this is this is going to be driven by the screening services. Some cons is it can increase anxiety. Some people might not ever have breast cancer in their lives and they go for screenings, which can make them very worried if they find something which might be benign. Time of work and transport, again, it's, it, it's gonna be expensive for people. Uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, it's gonna be very expensive in terms of time of work and transport. Benign biopsies and unnecessary recall. So, um, we're going to see that several lesions can be benign and it can be very common for benign lesions to appear like fibroadenomas or things of the sort 
and many times these can be biopsied to be sure that they're not cancer. Treatment of people that would die due to other conditions. So depending on the breast cancer that is found, it can be a relatively slow growing tumor. And so if someone's already very elderly and very frail, uh, th there's the, always the possibility they could die from something else. So finding a breast cancer might not be very useful in these people if there's something else that will end their life earlier. Uh, also false reassurance. Again, there's several different types of breast cancer. Sometimes you, they could miss out a certain type of breast cancer, like a lobular carcinoma in situ is relatively hard to see on imaging. But also certain breast cancers can just appear later on and become very aggressive. Um, so yeah, this is also one of the arguments. So a quick overview of breast cancer. So it's usually going to be a palpable hard mass, most often in the upper outer quadrant of the breast, as you can see here. And um, sometimes invasive, invasive tumors can become fixed. So it can be very hard to move them around, or sometimes you can move them, but they're kind of they kind of infiltrated nearby tissue. So they can be fixed, and sometimes they can infiltrate uh, underlying tissue, such as the muscles in this region, which can make them very hard to move. Uh, and they're most common. Most breast cancers are in the terminal duct lobular unit. And something very important to remember about breast cancers is that they can be estrogen progesterone or HER2 positive, or that they can also be positive for only one of these. They can be only estrogen positive, but not progesterone or HER2 positive. And uh, or as well as they can be negative for all three. So triple negative means that uh, they don't have estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, or HER2 uh, receptors. And usually these tumors are more aggressive than tumors that are triple positive. And many times these tumors can metastasize through the lymph system to axillary lymph nodes. And uh, these metastases are a very important prognostic factor um, in early disease. So here is just a few points on how breast cancer can present. So many times it can present as a painless lump or swelling. Uh, there can be swelling under the armpit as well. And there can be an immobile mass in the breast. Uh, sometimes it can be skin dimpling. So if the breast cancer again invades nearby structures and uh, including the suspensory ligaments, this can cause skin dimpling. There can be fibrosis of the lactiferous ducts and suspensory ligaments again, and this can cause nipple retraction. Just a quick um, point, nipple retraction, um, I heard it's different from nipple inversion, even though the difference is not completely clear. If, if you want to look read more about this, definitely do. And sometimes, we're going to talk about this later, it can present as an eczematous rash over the nipple. So I'll show you images of this and we're going to discuss this later. All right, so I got this image online. I got this uh, image from this website. Um, and it's it shows the prevalence of, sorry, the incidence of some of these uh, types of breast cancer that we're going to talk about. Just keep in mind that invasive ductal carcinoma is supposed to be the most common form of breast cancer, according to this website. Um, yeah, so just have an idea of which ones are more common than others. All right, so let's start talking about non-invasive carcinomas. So just the first one, which is the most common form of non-invasive carcinoma, is ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS. And it arises from the from ductal aplasia, sorry, ductal atpm, and it's usually seen as microcalcifications on mammography. So the, this is this is very much one of the main reasons for mammography because you can find these microcalcifications. Then these microcalcifications can be biopsied and they can see you know, what type of lesion that is. And it's usually does not present as a palpable mass, so it's usually uh, usually you're going to find it mostly on mammographies microclassifications. There's a subtype of this form of, um, of tumor which is uh, called comedocarcinoma. So essentially it's a subtype of ductal carcinoma in situ that has central necrosis as well as calcifications. I'll show you an image of what this looks like. So this is um, 
a, a histological picture of ductal carcinoma in situ. You can see here in the center, there's several cells and it looks a bit disorganized. And here on the right, you can see what comedo carcinoma in situ looks like. You can see the center of necrosis around here. And there's also calcifications. So now let's talk about Badgett's disease. So this is when uh, a lesion extends. It can be ductal carcinoma in situ or invasive breast cancer. And it extends from the inside of the breast to the outside of the breast. At least that's how I remember it. So it goes from the inside of the breast to the skin uh, around the nipple. So it will appear as an eczematous rash over the nipple and the areola. And um, in histology, you can have what's called Paget cells. So these are intraepithelial adenocarcinoma cells. So I'll show you what this looks like. So I couldn't, sadly because of YouTube rules, I can't put um, an image of a female with these conditions. So I put an image of a male with this problem and this is quite an extreme scenario y usually it's a lot subtler than this of course it can be a lot more severe than this but uh, definitely search the images on google so you can have a better idea of what they look like but you can see that there's a rash around the nipple and around the areola of the nipple and on histology these are the paget cells as well so if you're doing an exam and they mention paget cells you can already suspect um, Badgett's disease of the breast. Another form of breast cancer is lobular, sorry, lobular carcinoma in situ or LCIS and these are usually due to decreased expression of a protein called ecadherin, uh, which from my understanding it helps cells um, stick together and usually there are no masses or calcifications so most times this would be an incidental finding um so yeah definitely scary when they say that it's an incidental finding and there's increased risk uh, and if you find this type of lesion there's increased risk of cancer in both breasts so usually dcis which is ductal carcinoma in situ there will be increased risk of cancer in one breast the breast you found the lesion but with this type of cancer lobular carcinoma in situ you're going to be at increased risk of cancer in both breasts so definitely watch out so this is what lobular carcinoma in situ looks like. I got this image from this link here. Um, it is, it's definitely very messy and you can see several cells growing and all, just all over and are really in the right place. So yeah. Now let's talk about invasive carcinomas. So these are the, the type of carcinomas that have broken through the basement membrane and they have a higher risk of metastasizing, or at least they are at risk of metastasizing. So the first one we're gonna talk about is invasive ductal carcinoma, which is the most common form of invasive breast cancer. And it usually presents as a rock hard lump on the breast. And if it has invaded nearby tissue, it can be immobile. So definitely watch out for that. Here's an image of what it looks like. In my opinion, it looks very similar to the lobular carcinoma in situ, if you look under histology. And you can see that it's a very disorganized bunch of cells that's invading nearby tissues, and it's just very disorganized. Next, there's invasive lobular carcinoma. So again, if uh, it, it's gonna be increased risk in both breasts. So if you find it in one breast, definitely make sure to um, to examine the other breast as well and it's also caused by a decreased uh, expression of ecadherin which is an important protein that connects cells together from my understanding and on histology you can see you, you can see that it almost looks like there's a single file of cells like almost as if there was a layer one on top of another so it's in my opinion surprisingly organized for an invasive carcinoma but this is what it looks like. It definitely look at more images um, to to see uh, to have a better idea of what everything looks like, and so you can do well in your exams. Another type of breast cancer is medullary carcinoma. So these are usually well circumscribed tumors, and many times it can be confused for fibroadenomas. 
and they're usually associated with BRCA1 mutations. And most of the time, sadly, they are triple negative, which, as we discussed earlier, is usually a more aggressive form of tumor. And it grows in sheets with infiltrates of lymphocytes and uh, plasma cells. So this is what this histology, histological image is supposed to be showing. But honestly, it's, it's just a very confusing image. So definitely have a look at it in your own time. Search for other images of um, breast cancer, especially medullary breast cancer. Another type of breast cancer is inflammatory carcinoma. And uh, this is when there's dermal lymphatic space invasion by the, um, by the cancer. And the breast becomes very inflamed. So it's going to be a very painful condition. And the, these women are going to have what's called peel d'orange. Not all of them, but a lot of them can, which you can see here on this photo on the right which is the skin dimpling here. It's called peel d'orange because it's supposed to look like an orange. And you can see these um, tiny holes here. It's, it's almost as if the skin is being stretched. Um, so it usually doesn't have palpable masses, but there's a very poor prognosis for this form of breast cancer. And you can see here in histology, it's just, it's just invasive of nearby tissue and it's very, um, confusing to understand exactly what's going on. Now let's talk about diagnosis of breast cancer. So it's done as a triple assessment. So first off, there's a physical exam where you can usually find a lump or something of the sort. Then there's imaging, which usually can be mammography, can be an ultrasound sometimes, can be an MRI. Most often you're gonna see um you're gonna see mammography but it can also be ultrasound again it can be several different types of imaging and then can, there can be a, a biopsy so that you can actually see what's going on in that lesion and what type of lesion it is if it's cancerous or if it's not cancerous this can be done as a fine needle aspiration and cytology then potential complications of breast cancer uh, so it can be fibrosis from local infl inflammation caused by the tumor there can also be invasion of nearby tissues, and this is where a lot of the issues come from. There can be blockage of lymph vessels, so sometimes if there's blockage of lymph, um, there's going to be problem draining some areas. And if you search online, you can see some people that have very swollen arms or things of the sort. But definitely a very big risk for breast cancer, uh, especially if it's invasive, it's metastasis to different areas of the body but mostly the spine the brain and the bone this is an image of someone that has brain metastasis from breast cancer you can see here there are these huge lesions in the brain and very scattered now let's talk about some of the treatments for um, breast cancer so there can be surgery which will vary depending on the type of cancer the stage of the cancer how much it has spread so if it's a relatively contained lesion, it can be, there can be a local excision, excision, there can be a partial mastectomy, or even a total mastectomy, depending on how much the tumor has spread. And sometimes even nearby structures can be removed as well. There can be radiation therapy and chemotherapy, like most other forms of cancer. And there can also be hormone therapy, which is uh, which again will vary depending on the type of cancer and if the cancer is positive for estrogen, progesterone and HER2. So trastuzumab is a HER2, um, it's a modified antibody against HER2 receptors. You can see by the MAB that stands for modified antibody. Uh, tamoxifen is an uh, estrogen receptor modulator. This will be useful in uh, tumors that are estrogen positive. Anastrozole is an aromatase inhibitor and it's very important, an aromatase an enzyme that's important in farming certain estrogens as well, from my understanding. So it can also help, um, it can also help in some forms of cancer which are, which are positive for estrogen. So this is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please comment down below if you found any inaccuracies. Again, we're all still learning, so it's very helpful with we can help each other and learn from each other. So if you find anything that you believe is not correct, or if you want to add any more information, please comment it down below. And also 
subscribe if you enjoyed if subscribe if you enjoy our videos so yeah thank you very much for watching bye bye guys